So at the beginning of the pandemic, toilet paper is suddenly starting to be sold out everywhere. People are buying as much as they can get their hands on because they're worried they're gonna be stuck inside for a long time and not be able to go outside because it's not safe. So they need toilet paper and they're not going to work, they're working from home. So all the toilet paper that they might otherwise be using at their offices, at restaurants, wherever they go, they're now using it at home. But everyone says, no, there is no real shortage. America is not running out of toilet paper. Um, it will be back in stock in a few weeks. People just need to stop buying quite so much and stop hoarding it. But so here we are two months later into the pandemic and toilet paper is still really, really hard to find. This is a problem. How are they going to fix it? And so I did a deep dive into the toilet paper industry. So let's go back to March 12th. If you think about it, the day before March 11th is when the WHO declares the coronavirus a pandemic. And that is the day that everything changes for everyone. Almost everyone's preparing to work from home. And that's when you start to see people descend on the stores. And that day, toilet paper actually becomes the number one best-selling item at grocery stores. Pictures are showing up on social media of bare shelves, empty of paper products. That's a scary thing for a lot of people to see because you'd, usually when you go to the grocery store, you can expect to find something as simple as toilet paper. It's not something that's really ever sold out and all of a sudden, it's this hot commodity item that you can't find anywhere. You can't find it online. I think Amazon was probably the first place it was sold out and then soon after, it's Walmart, it's Costco, it's Kroger, it's Albertsons. In some parts of the country, they're calling 911 because they can't find toilet paper. And it just shows you that, you know, as people started to panic a little bit, this kind of it fuels their panic even more. And so anytime they even see a roll of toilet paper, they're grabbing it because they don't know when they're gonna see another one. And so sales actually surge 734% on March 12th for toilet paper. And that's when it becomes the number one best-selling item in grocery stores, and it's sold out for most of the country. You know, as much as companies and experts try to deny it at first, when everyone starts to perceive there's a shortage, they buy it going forward, they stock up on it, and therefore perception becomes reality. And that's what's happened here. So even if there wasn't a shortage at the beginning, the perception that there was a shortage has now become reality. So the reason that toilet paper is such a uniquely complex challenge is because of the nature of what it is. I mean, think about it, you know, they're bulky, white rolls. You can't store a lot of it without investing huge amounts of money. So it's very expensive to make, very expensive to store. And so it's become, you know, the kind of poster child of the trend in manufacturing over the past decade called just-in-time manufacturing. And what it basically means is you're producing just enough uh, to meet demand at the time that it's needed. The right amount at the right time delivered to the stores, the customer buys it. Nobody's ever storing huge amounts of toilet paper for too long. That makes it a very lean operation. You don't have more than a couple of weeks of toilet paper on hand. I mean, just think about it. For Walmart to store that much toilet paper, you're talking extra warehouses. Amazon, extremely efficient company, does not want to be, you know, having a warehouse full of toilet paper when it could be storing, you know, maybe six times, 10 times as much as something else like soap or shampoo. Toilet paper is uniquely costly and uniquely capital intensive, and therefore you can't keep a lot of it around at one time. And so here you have the pandemic when it sells out all at the same time very quickly, and suddenly the supply chain has no chance of catching up. So think about the investment that would be required for companies to produce more toilet paper and have more at hand. So, you know, say you want to produce more Tide detergent, you want to fill up those bottles, you can open another assembly line for relatively cheap, probably under $10 million. To do that with paper, these are huge machines. I mean, like two stories high in terms of machines, huge, you know, factories, just because of the scale of the rolls of paper and what it takes. To do that, you'd need to invest about $300 million. That's something that no company is gonna do, not to mention the time that it would take to do that, maybe 18 months when we're not even in the pandemic anymore. Nobody wants to be stuck with mounds and mounds of toilet paper. You have three big players in the toilet paper industry. Um, the first one being Procter & Gamble. They make Charmin. 
Um, and then you have Kimberly Clark, which makes Cottonelle and Scott. And then the third one is Georgia Pacific, which is not in the Fortune 500. But so, you know, I'm talking to P&G and Kimberly Clark, and what they're telling me is they're, you know, doing everything they can to make toilet paper to meet demand. And so what they do is basically all of the downtime, all of the time that it would take every time they wanna make you know, ultra strong versus ultra soft, they would have to stop the machines, change out all the packaging, change out all the kinds of paper, and it's a significant amount of downtime. So they said, you know what? We're not gonna do that. We're gonna make fewer kinds of toilet paper and we're just gonna keep the machines running. You know, we might take a break for an hour, two times a day, but we're gonna have three shifts. Maybe some even went from two shifts to three shifts. We're gonna run 24 hours a day um, and make as much toilet paper as we possibly can. PNG even says that some of their workers who would normally be in the office and could be working from home are now coming in and working on the floor of the plants just to make sure there's enough toilet paper for America. They're actually, as we speak, collecting all the lessons that they've learned and having this a huge internal meeting about how can we implement these lessons forward? How can we make sure that we know when there's a demand shock coming, that's something that all of a sudden this is gonna be selling out and increase production if they need to, but also importantly at the same time, they don't wanna be stuck making too much toilet paper when demand drops off. And as soon as people go back to work, you know, demand could drop off a cliff. So importantly, they wanna make sure that they can also take production down quickly when they start to get those signals that demand has fallen. And similarly, with Kimberly Clark, which has said they've significantly reduced their toilet paper. You know, if you're seeing more uh, kinds of cotton now, you're often seeing them um, rather than the 12 packs, you're seeing them in more four packs and six packs because that way they can spread the supply across more customers. So, you know, whereas one customer might be able to get a 12 pack, now you can have two customers buying six packs, three buying four packs. It's a little bit more fair, it keeps people happy. They're not freaking out as much that they won't be able to find any toilet paper. They've also realized that, hey, you know, it's much more efficient and consumers don't mind. In fact, they actually like the choices that we're giving them. Maybe we don't quite need as many choices after the pandemic. And so when this all ends, you probably won't see as many different kinds of different toilet paper as you did before. The industry has been so concerned over the last 10 years about just being so efficient. How do we cut every single cost? How do we be make, make sure we're lean? That it doesn't allow for really any of the protection that you could build in. If you say had you know a month's worth of toilet paper on hand, uh, just in case something happened, the supply chain was disrupted by a hurricane or a snowstorm, they do that to a certain extent when there's some weather, but only regionally. You could never really do that across the whole country. I don't think that I've ever thought before about where does my toilet paper come from? It's something that we all really take for granted. And so it's really exposed how the modern supply chain that has brought us so much efficiency and made shareholders very happy in terms of cost cutting uh, and profits also doesn't really have a lot of buffer, a lot of protection, you know, or a lot of give in it in the case of a huge crisis like this one, where suddenly people need something very, very crucially and just want to buy it all at the same time.